Welcome everyone. We are here for another blab on getting in the right mindset, getting ready for this morning, a Monday morning. It is September 21st, 2015. And I'm Coach Janine and I will be reading from Joel Osteen's daily readings from Becoming a Better You, 90 Devotions for Improving Your Life Every Day. And then we'll be discussing it. So again, Welcome, jump in. We've got open seats. Let's get going. And I hope you have your favorite beverage. So join me. No makeup required. We're just going to have some fun with this. And it keeps seeming that everyone joins about 6.15. So maybe I need to change the time of this. It's still a little bit too early for everyone. But. Hope everyone had a great weekend. My Redskins won yesterday, so yay. Hope your favorite football team, if you're a football fan, you your team won. So I'm going to just jump in and start the reading, and then we'll see where this takes us. And this is a perfect one for a Monday because it's a new week. You get a fresh start, and this reading just makes sense, and it's perfect for today. Waving at the rear view mirror. My servant, Caleb, has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Numbers 14, 24. The car you drive has a large windshield, but only a relatively small rear view mirror. The implications is obvious. What happened in your past is not nearly as important as what is in your future. When you're going, where you are going is much more important than where, than where you've been. I need more coffee. If you stay focused on the past, you're liable to miss, most, to miss numerous excellent opportunities ahead. I need coffee. How do we let go of the past? First, discipline your thoughts to stop thinking about it. Quit talking about it. Quit reliving every negative experience. Stop thinking about it. Quit talking about it. Quit reliving it. If you've been through a loss or one of your dreams has died, of course there's a proper time for grieving. But at some point you need to get up dust yourself off, put on a fresh attitude, and start pressing forward in life. Don't let disappointment become, become the central theme of your life. Quit mourning over something you can't change. God wants to give you a new beginning, but you have to let go of the old before you'll see the new. Let that door close behind you and step through the door in front of you. Goes back to a couple previous episodes when we talked about that door has got to be fully closed. Maybe you've allowed other people to convince you you're never going to rise higher, that you will never see your dreams come to pass. It's been too long. You've messed up too severely. Don't believe those lies. Instead, take courage from the Old Testament character, Caleb. When Caleb was a young man, he and Joshua were part of an exploratory spy mission to determine the strength of their enemy before God's people moved into the land that God had promised them. Of the 12 spies, only Caleb and Joshua presented a positive report to Moses. They said, we are well able to take the land. The other 10 spies said, no, Moses, there are giants in the land. The opposition is too formidable. The obstacles to overcome are too large. And the majority tried to talk Moses and the rest of the children of Israel out of pressing forward into the blessings that God promised them. They were all too willing to settle for second best, to dwell for the rest of their lives where they were. Unfortunately, that group of negative thinkers never did make it into the promised land. They spent the next 40 years spinning their wheels and wandering around aimlessly in a desert. Eventually, most of them died with their dreams still in them, as God raised up an entire new generation of people. By then, Caleb was 85 years old, but he hadn't given up on the dreams God had placed in his heart. 
A lot of people that age would be sitting back in rocking chairs, thinking about the good old days, but not Caleb. He kept himself stirred up and he kept himself in shape as well. He told Joshua that he was still as strong as when the promise first came to him. Caleb went back to the exact place, the same mountain the others had feared to climb. He said, God, give me this mountain. Caleb was saying, in effect, I don't want another place to live. I still have this dream in my heart. Interestingly, Caleb did not ask for an easy inheritance. In fact, the mountain he claimed had five giants living on it. Surely he could have found a place less fortified, more accessible, or more easily occupied. But Caleb said, no, I don't care how many ob obstacles are there. God promised me this place. Although it is 40 years later, I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep believing until I see that promise fulfilled. That's the kind of attitude we need to have. We give up too easily. Well, I didn't get the promotion I wanted. I guess it's not going to happen. My husband and I can't get along. I guess it's over. No, keep pressing forward and keep believing. Keep yourself stirred up. You've got the gifts, the talents, and the dreams. Don't allow complacency to keep you from seeing God's promises fulfilled in your life. Wow. How's that for a kick in the pants for a Monday morning? Whatever happened to last week, it's over. Drop it. What didn't work well, just drop it. Those nasty clients, the mean customer, drop it. Just let it go. You know you've already addressed whether it was out of your control or not. If it was out of your control, just drop it so you can continue to more move forward and design a strategy, continue to live your plan, hopefully you already got a strategy, on making your dreams come true. Don't stay stuck in the past on the negative. So I think that's very, very powerful. And again, where you go, where you are going is much more important than where you've been. Where are you where you are going is much more important than where you've been. So again, don't let others hold you back. If you need to evaluate your circle of influence, go to my website, coachjanine.com. There's a handout you can download, circle of influence, and you can see what role your top 10 people are playing in your life. So welcome. Welcome. Just finished reading our our message for the day from Joel Osteen. And now we're talking about moving forward and having a positive week. We've got open seats. So jump on board if you'd like to chat about how you're going to make sure you have a positive week or get in a positive mindset for today. Now here's um, continuing with our normal reading. Today's thought to become a better you. Nothing I will face today surprises or surpasses the one who is with me. Nothing I will face today surprises or surpasses the one who is with me. Remember, God is always with you. He's with you. He's for you. He's in you. He wants what's best for you. Again, I know it's Monday. Everyone's a little slow moving. Have your coffee. Look at your week. What is going on? Will you share your gifts with someone else? How will you share your gifts with someone else this week? Keep looking at my phone because sometimes people are texting me. They're trying to get on. Sometimes there's some really good stuff going on. I hope everybody again had a great weekend. You were able to take some self care. From, let's see, I just lost it.
Alrighty. Here's a great one for Kimberly uh, Joins Paul III. Resonate this week is going to be the best week of your life, full of divine appointments and awesome behavior. So I hope again everyone has a good week. Now I'm going to go ahead and read the prayer since I've been jumping on today. And Today's prayer to become a better you. Help me remember, Father, that when I look back, I can't see you. You are with me, preparing my future. I want to eagerly look forward to what you have in store for me. Teach me to be as confident as Caleb in trusting you along. Again, you know, if you're not getting that immediate gratification, that's where your faith comes in. That's what I'm seeing in you. Believing in your life purpose, believing in God comes in. It's how that faith You don't get out when you want it. You have, you know, it's all there for a reason. Those, you know, when you go off and get what you want, one rejection is action. But also, you're not ready for it, and He knows you're not ready for it. You have to make sure you've got those business systems, your budget, your more, more. I often see people wanting, you know, oh, I'm going to open up a bigger store or I'm going to do this. They don't have a business plan. They don't even have a personal plan for life. So it, it makes it difficult to get more when you're not ready. Welcome, Janita. Got some open seats. I'm here by myself if you want to jump on board and talk about getting ready for the week, um, how you stay motivated. It's Monday, fresh new day, new beginnings, new beginnings. I've read our passage from Joel Osteen, and we're really looking at, you know, where you're going is much more important than where you've been. Last week was it's done, it's over, it's a new week, and it's time to move forward. It's time to make plans, and if you don't have – a plan for the week, then again, I encourage you, grab your day planner, look at it. If it's blank, why is it blank? Do you need to up your marketing strategy? Do you need to, maybe it's all in your head and you actually need to put it, put it on the paper so you don't forget something. But don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. So welcome everybody. Again, join in, join the seats. We're talking about getting motivated for the week, getting inspired, having a great week. So feel free to jump in and share some tips or words of wisdom or favorite quote, something to inspire everyone. I know a lot of people listen to these later because 6 a.m. they said it's just way too early. It fits into my schedule perfect. Because then once we're done here, the sun's coming up. I can get outside and walk Miss Savannah, who's sleeping over here on her bed. She just lifted her head. Great dog. She knows not to bark during these. When I first started doing podcasts, she would often bark or beg or let her presence be known. But now she knows it's too early for her. So, again, this is perfect platform, no makeup required. Just jump on in. I know we've had people in their PJs. Morning coffee, wake up together. It's all about becoming a better you, having a better mindset, knowing where you're going. So, again, remember, the car you drive has a large, large windshield, but only a small rear view mirror. What happened in the past is not as important as what's in your future. And that's by Joel Osteen. And again, you know, it's we see that in infographs. We see it over on Pinterest and different things. And it's all it's it is the perception and where you're focused and how you're going to get going. 
you know, whether it's job hunting this week, finding that dream job, it, it requires having a plan, a dedication, and a positive mindset. I hope nobody's, you know, everybody jokes about Monday. And, I, you know, it's like, oh, it's Monday. But I think Monday's a great day. It's a do-over. It's a fresh week. It's, you know, the weekend's behind us. The last week's behind us. You know, we go in, oh, excuse me, I'd sit here still yawning, waking up. It's actually our last full week of the month. So look at your goals, your revenue goals, your, if you're a business owner, what do you need to do to kick up the profits this week? Kick up the marketing. Are you ready for, you know, can you believe next week's the fourth quarter? We start the fourth quarter next week, October. So are you ready for it? Are you ready for the fourth quarter? Is your business ready? Are you personally ready? Because even on a personal side, we got all the major holidays, the expensive holidays coming up. Thanksgiving, you know, times when people are traveling, even Halloween, if you've seen the price of Halloween costumes, if you partake in that, I'm not willing to part with my money to do that. I like handing out the candy to the kids that come knocking on the door. But even that gets very expensive. So you need a good plan going into the fourth quarter of how you're not going to go broke, how you're going to maintain your diet, because it's the eating frenzy of the year with Halloween candy, Thanksgiving. we got the Marine Corps ball. And everybody wants to look good in their ball gown. We've got, of course, Christmas, New Year's. You know, starting that fourth quarter into really – even the first quarter of the next year is a lot of expensive holidays, a lot of eating holidays, which with eating comes often we're eating foods and drinking beverages that maybe aren't so good for us. And it can make us feel a little bit blah. And you've got to recognize that and even decide how are you going to handle the temptations? How are you going to up your exercise routine? Are you going to drink more water? How are you going to manage all the holiday parties and sleep and work and family and life? It's time this week really to start your plan of maintaining your sanity, your positive mental and physical health. Uh, I encourage you, if you missed Friday's blab, to go back and download it. The last 45 minutes, it got, it got long. We went about an hour and a half. And the last 45 minutes was powerful. We had some guests on and we were doing breathing exercises. We were, it was very informative. A couple of the early on blabs we did, because we're new here too, we did some stretching exercises with a breathing exercise on maintaining the stress and composure type thing. So again, I encourage you all to Listen to the past episodes. If you don't listen to the replay here, you can go over to my YouTube channel and I've got them over there and I've got them on Pinterest. So that's part of my strategy of using Blab to help market. I enjoy doing the Blab just as a way to share. I always start my day reading. So I know a lot of people that follow me and work with me also read in the morning. So this is kind of our time to join together. So welcome, everyone. I see more people jumping on board. We've got open seats, getting motivated for this Monday morning to have a great week. So again, the last full week of September. Next week, in midweek, we start going into the fourth quarter, which is going to be very busy for most of us. It's a busy time. It's a money-making time, whether you're a business owner or an employee. I know a lot of people, you know, if you work retail, you're in sales, that fourth quarter is huge. It's huge for making, you know, your money. So you need to be mentally, physically prepared. And as I stated, you know, we got the holidays coming up with all the different temptations that can, you know, the sugar overload, the carb overload, all of it. And I'm a big sugar person. So you know, I too need a strategy because all of that plays havoc. It can wreck your diet. It can wreck your mood. Going into the, you know, time will be changing. 
going into seasonal affective disorder time, sad. I've got a video over on YouTube under, it's probably under one of the psychology playlists. Lab has its own playlist. They all have their own, but it's under there or maybe for business owner success. It might be under there, but you know, seasonal affective disorder, it's getting that time. It's going to be dark when you wake up. It may be dark when you drive home from work and you're missing the sunlight. Sunlight, we need it. Keeps us going too. So again, don't make me sit here and talk by myself. Jump in a seat. Come on, we've got some open seats. I'd love for y'all to join. Jump on in. If you've got questions, you know, a marketing question, I'm good at marketing. I'm good at business procedures. Time management's a, I'm good at too. So, you know, jump on in. Jump on in. Jump on in, guys. Don't make me do all the talking. So, what do you, or somebody just, if, if you don't want to jump in, at least post a topic you want to talk about or post some questions in the side. We had some good comment conversations last week. We had a gal from, I think we had several from Minnesota area. They were up way early because they're on a different time than I am. And we talked about, Direct sales marketing, marketing, choosing the right direct sales. And, you know, as we talk about going into the fourth quarter, if you're looking to pick up extra income, direct sales opportunities may be something you want to. <laughs> Tish says, enjoy. He talks too much. I talk too much. Come on in. But, you know, direct sales may be something you want to explore, but definitely make sure you're not feeling pressured. Okay, I'm reading his profile. Affirmations without action or hallucination. Success will never come through osmosis. I love that. Welcome. Good morning. You doing? How are you doing? Where are you located? I am in North Carolina. You are up early in the United States. You are up very early. I get up about 4 a.m., so this is a good time for me to get up and and blab. Wow. So where are you located? Currently, I'm in the beautiful, okay, the most beautiful city in the world, Cape Town, South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Good morning. What time is it there? Right now, it's just after midday. Mm. It's 24 past. Uh, so you're wide awake. Yeah, I woke up First, a long time I'm ago. I'm still waking up. I woke up a long time ago. I'm actually about to go back to bed. I'm done for the day. <laughs> so I just jumped on. Okay, I see Bruno has joined us. Welcome, Bruno. And again, we've got extra seats. We're just getting motivated. I'm getting motivated for the morning. Everybody else, depending on your time zone, maybe you're getting re inspired for your afternoon or your evening. So, so what do you do to stay inspired or to get motivated for a new week? I don't really do anything to stay motivated. I'm just, uh, for starters, I had to eliminate starch and anything which uh, was which contained blood and things like that. When you eliminate those kind of things, you automatically are always energized because starch and animal produce it drains you because you are taking frequencies of those things and if like you know in the killing of most of these animals the frequencies are not that positive so i'm always like you know bouncing off the wall and i love what i do when you love what you do and you're passionate about it no one ever has to tell you to get motivated or you know, it's like when you meet a beautiful girl, right? No one will ever have to tell you to think of her. You constantly think from the minute you wake up to the, you know, that's what people need to do. Focus on what you love and everything else will be in alignment. It's when you treat this like a job, then it becomes exactly that. You need to be motivated, wake up and think, ah, then you have to schedule yourself to, you know, with me, I wake up 
and I'm excited. I'm off to the races. And at the end of the day, the thing which I do before I go to bed, I log into my different accounts, see how much money I've made for that particular day. Did we pass our targets? Did, you know, those kind of things excite me. They really excite me. And like, uh, I always have something to count down towards. Like right now, next month, I've got a a sold out event in Atlanta. So I'm counting down the days when I'm going to be on stage speaking in front of uh, 3,000 people, you know, showing off my beautiful smile. So those kind of things really motivate a person. They really motivate a person. So that's just me. That's beautiful though. And I, I hope if you're not waking up with that passion, that you're able to start designing a strategy so you do wake up with that passion. Because I agree. I think when you're doing what you love, it's not work. Mm -hmm. It's not work. You do wake up energized and ready to go. It's when you're not living your life purpose that sometimes it's that dragging yourself out of bed. I promise myself so. one thing. The day I don't love what I do is the day I stop doing it. There's like, we only have one life, one life. And each and every day you go and you're not happy. Each and every day you feel the sadness, that anxiety. It's a day wasted and day which you can never get back. So with me, like the day I wake up and I don't feel like it, I find something else. I have to fall in love with what I do. I have to do exactly what I love, exactly when I want. Like I always tell people, like I went through the first two years trying to do what I'm doing right now. In the first two years, working 17 hours a day, seven days a week, I made $100 in two years. It's impossible for you to be able to do such a thing if you don't love the journey you are on. Now, do you know when I wake up? I only wake up when I get tired of sleeping. That's when I wake up. You know, and when you can, when you can do that, and I'm not confined by any boundaries. Like next month, I'm going to be in Atlanta. I'll be working there as long as there's internet. The next following month, I'll be in Romania. There will be internet, so I'll be working from there. The next month, I'm going to be in Slovenia. Then. Um, uh, what's Singapore? You know, now the life I live, it's exciting, right? It's like, it's exciting to the point that I am jealous of myself. You know, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, I wish to be you. You know, that's an amazing feeling. That is an absolutely amazing feeling. And that's all I can say. I wish more people come and jump in so that I can jump off. <laughs> I told you I talk too much. No, you're fine. Dana, Dana, join us. Nate, somebody jump on board. We still got a couple seats here. Dana was with us last week. I know he's in, if I remember correctly, Dana, you're in New York, right? And I know sometimes people are shy or they're getting ready for the morning. So again, if you've got comments and you don't want to jump on board, just type in the chat window as you're getting ready. And and Nate's in Houston. So it's early, early morning still for Nate, too, because you're, I think, an hour behind me. I'm on the East Coast Houston, in North Carolina. Yeah, that's Central Standard Time. So. And New York, New York is amazing. I just came, from, came back from New York. It's a nice city. Nice, nice, nice city. So what do you do? What do I do? I do. A, I'm a business and career coach. I help people turn their dreams into reality. Mm. I work predominantly with veterans mm -hmm. because I'm a retired Marine. Dana says his family would kill him because he's too loud. <laughs> 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 yes. I I don't have to worry about that. So I live alone, which is... I enjoy working with people, figuring out what they want to do. Most people I work with are reinventing themselves because maybe they've retired from the military mm -hmm. or already retired from the corporate world. 
and they're looking for what's next. Oh, that is nice. What's the next step? And we design that next step so they can truly live life on their terms and have be do what they're passionate about. Oh, yeah. I think um, most people don't do what they're passionate. Somebody has squashed that dream. <laughs> They've chosen a practical career path that will pay good money but it's not what's in their heart it's not their life purpose that's what my mom tried to do for me she was advising me to get a job um, going for two years and no money was tough for her to see a son go, going through considering that i've got a bcom degree majored in cost and management accounts i was like definitely not i'm not getting a job it was tough and i've got serious add right and i was being told to take medication to you know to focus more and all those things i really wanted to be me always and it was not easy only now people pay attention to me because i'm rich that's the only thing right but for me to fit in i had to change who i am and it was not worth it for me. It was really not something I was open to doing, becoming something which I'm not. Right now, with my ADD, whatever, I'm touching over 10,000 lives each and every day, right? People who are directly affected by the decisions I make. So, am I? You know, I can't complain. You know, I can't really complain now. I can't complain. So how did you stay motivated and inspired through the lean times as you were growing? Okay, one thing which I understood very early on in life was that life is about seasons. It's about seasons. Like I was blessed growing up. My family was blessed. Then my father passed away and everything disappeared with him. Then my mother started working hard and we managed to get some things back, right? And I always knew that sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down. And when you are up, you need to prepare for the times when the, the hard times are going to come. So when they come to me, it's like, Oh, excellent. That means things are going to get, start to, one day they're going to be, get what? Better. So I'm excited that uh, I'm going through a tough period. It's different when people like, they want to, to hold on to something good long after the time to let it go has passed, right? I'm not scared. Like right now, last year, let me tell you a story. Last year we lost a billion, which was a, a business which was doing, um, almost 100,000 a day, right? And we went from 100,000 a day to zero overnight. And most people would like lose it. With my partner and I were like, you know what? It has happened. Why do we need to do what did we learn from it? And we proceeded. Now we are back on top, right? And you need to accept that when you are on top, we are also halfway down. And when you're down, you're also halfway up. It's just the way life goes. Okay, we got a question here. How do you guys feel about personal development when it comes to having a right mindset? I love that. <laughs> I think that it's key. You've got to, you first, you got to know when you're not in the right mindset, mm -hmm. when the mindset you have is holding you back. I'm big on personal development. You have got to always be moving forward and not in a bad way, but why would you want to stay like right here, right now? I think God has bigger plans for all of us and life is always changing. So we need to be aware of the trends in our industry and just continue to keep moving forward so we can share the gifts. But the mindset, oh, if you catch yourself in a negative or a foul, mean and nasty, you need to stop it right then and there and know your strategies to, for one, again, identifying it and that self-talk of, oh, you know, like I'll say, Janine, you are being ugly. Just shake it off. And that's where some of those breathing exercises, going for a walk. You gotta, you've got to know what works for you, but you've got to change that mindset. 
what? And I think again, when you're in your purpose, hopefully you don't have many negative minds. <laughs> but but <laughs> but you know, even just looking at it's Monday. If you're over on Facebook, you'll see all those infographs of you know somebody with the cough. It's Monday. Oh my God! And they act like it's horrible. But I love Monday. It's a new day. It is a new week. It's full of exciting things. You it's it's the mindset. It's how you choose to see something, how you choose to react. And like we talked about last week with you know Joel Osteen talked about going through the two doors and you that one has got to close. So you got to turn off that negative and figure out what works for you. And so now I've talked a lot so I'm going to turn it over <laughs> To, so you get another perspective. Uh, I think mindset's crucial. You see, for me, right, full disclosure, I spend at least two hours on personal development a day. I started personal development, I ended personal development. That's the first thing. One thing you need to understand is us as human beings, we are, we, we are vibrational beings, right? And the universe operates in terms of vibrations. If you are tuned to a certain frequency, you cannot, or you are not in harmony with other frequencies which are different from that particular frequency. So if you are in a negative vibration, you cannot attract positivity to you. You can only attract that which you resonate on. Like for instance, uh, if you are, let's say, on... Um, FM radio, let's say FM1, for instance, right? I don't know if there's a radio station like FM1. It's impossible for you to be listening to FM2 because you are tuned into FM1. So your negativity, that's the only thing which you can connect with if you are negative. So you need to avoid negativity and control the frequency which you are vibrating at. That's why I spend at least two hours a day on um, personal development and you'll be hard pressed to find me in a negative state. I mean near impossible. I said near. I did say it's impossible. <laughs> and I'm going to piggyback on that comment with the negativity. Pay attention to your circle of influence. Who is around you? Are they being negative? Do they have a negative mindset? Is it dragging you down? Is it making you feel? I have a friend who is, I swear, the biggest sour puss in the world. <laughs> and he's always like, but you're so, so positive. So, and I'm like, why do I want to be mean and nasty or negative and, and grumpy? Why would I want, why do I, would I choose that? Remember, it's your choice. You have free will. But if you find yourself kind of, always being negative or in a funk, not maybe even just negative, but just feeling blah, pay attention to your circle of influence. Who is around you and how are they behaving? What energy are they giving off? Because if they're, you know, like attracts like. So kind of look at your circle of influence. Be that, try to be that one to change them. And sometimes you just have to say, stop it. Stop. Do you hear yourself? There's always a good. There's always something good to be grateful about. And I know that's a cliche. And sometimes people are like, well, I don't see it. Well, you know what? There, there is. There's always something to be positive about. I'm a little bit different from you. I don't keep people up positive. Uh, we are, I mean, who are negative around me. I just don't. If you are negative we are no longer going to be what friends that's it i'm just life is too short to try to change other people it takes so much effort for me to keep my head you know right and for me to be able to try to change someone else that is for starters it's wrong right because um people experience things in a different way and who am i to say no your way is wrong, be, do it my way. So 
I just remove myself from there and I align myself with like-minded people and you find life is easier that way as opposed to like, no, you don't think like that, think like this, you don't. Some people just want to be negative just because it gives them that attention. People like, you know, the saying, uh, misery loves company, right? So yes, I just don't indulge in that. It's very, very tough to change a person's point of view. Extremely tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. You, and I don't think you can really totally change people, but until they're ready to change, if they Thank want you. to change. So a lot of times the people that will come to me, of course, you know, I'm trying to get them to move forward in their business or in their personal life or if they're job hunting to stay positive. So it, it truly is a choice, but I agree. It can be very draining. And sometimes you have to, um, I call it almost divorcing those, those people who are holding you back or draining you or, you know, if you've, been with somebody and you just are even on the phone and after you leave that conversation you feel ick or less than you feel you just feel bad about yourself and it happens more than once or twice i think you need to really like we said distance yourself and say no more you don't you don't need to be a martyr you don't need to be the the kicking rock or whatever i don't even know what term to say but you don't need to be abused by people one thing right you now, don't need to be the victim or the brunt of their anger their abuse mm -hmm. their negativity again if that and so that comes part of that self-worth and knowing you know i don't have to put up with this and i think we were talking about this last week even with clients don't take on those nasty clients. If, if they're giving you a hard time just in that early contract negotiation phase, take that as a warning sign that they're probably going to be a very difficult person. And it was when we had, I think it was Andrew was on and we were talking, he made a comment about um, don't chase the dollar, do what you love, work with the people you love. And when you stop chasing the dollar, it will just naturally come. And I think there's a lot of truth in that because I'm working with a gal right now on a project that I normally don't work Sundays. I worked yesterday for about six hours. I will work nonstop today on it when I'm done here through about Thursday. But I just love her energy when we most very respectful when we met in person. I, you know, I just am excited to work on her project. And that's the excitement we were talking about. You know, you wake up wanting to work 24 seven because you love what you're doing. I, I'm loving this project. I've had others that when I'm working on it, I, I feel almost like a nervous wreck. And those aren't the right people for me. So. I totally agree with that one. Huh? Awesome. <laughs> I wish someone else would jump on. I just came to keep you company. Yeah, somebody jump in. Uh, you see, two more seats. Most people don't. Dana, did that answer your question again? If you're yeah. if you're getting ready for work and you don't want to jump on, guys, I am here with no makeup. I haven't done my hair. I wake up, brush my teeth, grab my coffee, and I just jump on here. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's blab. It's fun. It's informative. It's you know, this is helping me with, um, you know, I work from home. So if I weren't, you know, and I do teach at the college a couple of days a week, but some days like today, I have no reason to leave my house. So I wouldn't be conversing with anybody if I wasn't on this blab. It would just be me and my dog and working. So this is a great way for me to share what I love to do with everyone else. So I hope everyone else is enjoying it. But it's more fun when you all jump in a seat and we can share and learn from each other because, you know, we all get it's part of that personal growth. Dana was talking about, um, you know, I think personal growth is lifelong. I think it requires being open minded and willing to listen to somebody else and not think you are a know it all. 
When you know it all, you're not growing. I agree with that. You're not growing. I agree with that. So it's, it's neat to hear other people's perspectives. We all have different backgrounds. I'm a retired Marine. You know, my background psychology. I see things from my way. <laughs> and I love hearing and seeing from somebody else's direction. Austin, you're what, training now? All right. And again, we're here every morning, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. So please jump on board any day you can. If you've got a topic you want to talk about, type it in the chat room and or jump on board and we'll talk about it. It's it's really here for your business and personal growth. That's why we're here. Is to get you inspired, excited if you're kind of having a rough morning or you had a, a rough night or, you know, day the day before and you need to get your head in the right place this is the place this is the place you are a real motivator i like that i like that <laughs> <laughs> okay let me jump let me jump off i need to get back to i'm actually going to sleep now i've been up for four hours you guys sleep? <laughs> yeah, i've been up for four hours my work is done um I wait for my business partner to wake up later on, then do some work again. So I'll just go and nip it. Well, on. thanks for joining me this morning. It has been a great conversation, a great blast. Thank you, Bruce. I Thank mind you. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, guys, if nobody else wants to jump in the seat, then I am going to go ahead and read the prayer for today and. We can discuss it or we can just wrap it up because it is 647 already. And again, if you have something else you want to chat or a question, type it in the chat window. But the prayer for today, today's prayer to become a better you. Help me remember, Father, that when I look back, I can't see you. You are with me preparing my future. I want to eagerly look forward to what you have in store for me. Teach me to be as confident as Caleb in trusting you along the way. And then the thought for today. Nothing I will face today surprises or surpasses the one who is with me. So remember, no matter what your, what your journey is today, God is with you. You're not alone. You're not alone at all. And he's got exciting things for you exciting things in store so as i said at the beginning you know we're this is the last full week of september we're going to be heading into the fourth quarter it's really time to take a good look at where you are now with on if it's a business you're a business owner you're are you on track for making the money you want to make if not what do you got to do differently your fourth quarter marketing. Are you ready to market for the fourth quarter? Because that is, you know, typically what happens, the fourth quarter, for whatever reason, we know it happens every year at the same time, but it kind of sneaks up on us. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, here it is. And I haven't planned my blogs. I haven't planned my postcards, my mailings, updated brochures, Facebook timeline covers, media releases. We, we forget to do all that. It just kind of sneaks up. Or even if you're going to have a promotion, are you going to give away a Christmas gift, holiday gift? Or what sales are you going to do? That all sneaks up. So try to make some time between now and next week when the fourth quarter gets here to plan your marketing. If you're in sales, you probably need to catch up on some sleep because I know the fourth quarter for retail is brutal. It is brutal. So with all of this going on, it's important to make sure you know as much as i'm sitting here drinking my coffee maybe you need to be monitoring am i drinking too much caffeine and i need to drink more water looking at your your personal growth or health mental health physical health it all carries over the all the halloween candy all that sugar from the holiday parties having a strategy to not fall into a funk because you're in carb overload, sugar overload, keeping that positive mindset. And remember the, the holidays can be kind of depressing for some people too. Um, I'm looking at my calendar here. What do we got going on? This week is build a better image week. 
So that could be, again, if you're a business owner, how can you improve your business image? If you're job hunting or you are your own brand, you're, you know, even if you're a corporate person or no matter where you work, how can you improve your own image? Could be as simple as ironing your clothes or improving your grammar or just smiling more and being pleasant, saying, using your manners, please and thank you. It's also National Singles Week. And, you know, I think people forget that the holiday time coming up can be somewhat depressing for singles and especially you know like when married people are showing off all their bling and you know you're bombarded with the holiday commercials for love and romance don't do anything don't jump into any romance just to have a date during the holidays almost embrace being single but again it's it's a lot of that is evaluating your circle of influence and as Tish said, don't be around those, you know, try to eliminate the negativity if possible, the negative Nellies. No, you know, I'm not good with comebacks. When somebody says something really rude or snarky, I don't have that quick comeback. I tend to take it personal and then later I'll think, oh, I should have said this. I should have said that. Well, depending on your industry, you know what you'll probably hear about something. Kind of maybe have some scripts ready that you can say to diffuse the conflict, diffuse the negativity, some positive self-talk you can share. But start getting ready for that fourth quarter because it's going to be here next week. And again, everyone, it's Monday. So, I, you know, instead of looking at Monday as boring and draining, embrace it as a new and exciting adventure. It's the first day of a new adventure, Monday through Friday. It's here every week. We know it's here. So it is part of that mindset. So any last questions, thoughts, comments before we end for today? And we, are, I am here every Monday through Friday. I start with a passage from Joel Osteen, which kind of sets a good mindset. So if you miss the reading, you can always go back and listen to it on the replay. I post the replays over on YouTube. I've got a playlist strictly for Blab. I post them over on Pinterest on one of my Pinterest boards for Blab. Lots of ways I recycle it so you can listen. Subscribe so you're never, never lost, <laughs> never miss an episode. I hope everyone enjoyed this. I enjoyed being here with you all and Hoping you get ready for a great Monday. I know the sun's coming up now, so I can go out. Thank you, everyone, for the little love it. I appreciate it because without it, I when I'm here by myself, I sometimes wonder if I should be here or not. So I, I enjoy when you either at least communicate with me somehow. Thanks, Dana. I love it. Appreciate the little. I really do. Everyone have a fabulous Monday, a fabulous day. And again, look, I think we're now pretty much following each other all on Twitter. So, you know, you can send me a message if you need a kick in the pants. You're saying I'm having a bad day. Motivate me. And I'm like, OK. So everyone, again, I'm going to jump off here. I hope you enjoyed this blab. And I'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another morning moto, which, again, no makeup required. Just grab your coffee, jump on, and we'll talk about whatever you want to jump on. Dana, everyone have a fabulous day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.